About Face just launched this new foundation. It's a skin focused foundation and they have a fair olive shade. So to say the least, I am very excited to test this one out and let you guys know if it's worth the money. Actually, in terms of money, it is $22, which in terms of like higher end brands is actually really good. I feel like a lot of foundations nowadays, even like some more drugstore brands, their foundations can be around this price. So when I saw the price and just everything that it claims to do, it made me even more excited, but let's go ahead and dive into the details, wear, swatches, all the good stuff. So it just comes in this plastic box. It's super simple. I think it's really beautiful though because it shows what the bottle looks like and I think the bottle is very nice looking, so I'm glad they showed it off. So it does come in this rectangular package with this gunmetal colored top. I actually do quite like the shape of this. I feel like it's really easy to like grab onto. And then when you pull it out, it does have a doe foot applicator. Now, the reason that I pulled that out so slowly is because with these kinds of applicators that are doe foot, they have this really tight seal so it gets the extra product off so you're not gonna have a lot of buildup, which is a good thing. But the con is if you pull it out, like it doesn't even have to be fast, even just like a normal speed, I guess, it can sort of shoot out product and it might end up on your clothes or just, you know, you don't want foundation everywhere. So when you are using products like these, just make sure to go slow. Ever since I found that out with this one, I just opened it slowly and it hasn't been a problem since. It does pick up a little bit of product. I feel like it picks up a really good amount of product. I will talk about that later. But the shade that I got, by the way, is F2 Olive. Now this is a skincare focused foundation. So it's supposed to be good for your skin, feel really lightweight, and it claims to wear up to 12 hours. I really like that they didn't claim to have like a crazy amount of wear time. Like if it wears up to 12 hours, I will be really happy with it. The name of this foundation officially, by the way, is The Performer. And this is the shade F2 Olive. So watching this on my hand, you can barely see it, which is great because it means it's gonna be a great shade match for me. I have been testing this over the whole weekend because I wanted to get a really good feel for it so I could give you an in-depth review. So this is not a first impression just gonna share with you all the details. So of course, being it for olive, I was really excited to see that they have olive shades within each shade of the foundation. So like the fair shades, there's an olive option, the medium shades have one, and so do the dark options. So the shade range looks like it's quite nuanced. They have fair shades starting off, it is really light. You'll be seeing the swatches right now. So if you are very fair, even if you don't have an olive undertone, they have some really great cool, neutral, and warm fair shades. So they have those fair, light, medium, and deep shades. The deep shade range looks quite nice as well. It looks like it goes pretty deep. And they have olive shades within all of these ranges, basically. So if you have fair skin, all the way to deep skin, if you have an olive undertone, it looks like they have might have a shade for you. Let me give you a couple of swatches to compare in case you are a similar skin tone to me. I'm gonna start with the Elia foundation. This is S. F.25. I just want to swatch it next to some of my other like best match foundations. This is the Elia foundation. You can tell this one pulls a lot more yellow. I will say the about face one, it seems to have quite a true olive undertone. It's not a cool olive. It's not, I guess, slightly on the warmer olive side. And then we have my MAC foundation here, which is NC5. Keep in mind, this one is slightly light for me. So there's the MAC one there. Out of all three of these, I think this one definitely seems like the best match if we blend these out. Just gonna shake this up a little bit and then let's apply this. My skin has been a little drier than normal. It's definitely more just like combo skin at this point in the winter. So I do get um, quite a lot of oil breakthrough by the end of the day, but naturally my skin, it feels a little bit dry right now. So I'm just gonna take this straight from doe foot. The doe foot I think is really nice and easy to apply and it makes it fun to apply. The con is that maybe it's not the most like sanitary to apply it to your face. You can always just apply it on your hand. I always start with a clean face, so I'm not too worried about it. But let's go ahead. Let me just start with that much and then we will blend it out. I'm gonna blend this out with my sponge. By the way, I don't really notice any scent at all with this foundation, which is just amazing. There's no SPF. Seems really great for sensitive skin, which I do have. So there's one cheek blended out. Should be able to tell it blends out like a dream. It is a like very thin consistency, but it has like a great amount of coverage. 
It's just that kind of foundation that I really love that feels like nothing, but it just gets the job done. It does remind me of my MAC foundation, which is my current favorite. I do find that this one is giving me more coverage though, which I really like. And right off the bat, I wouldn't say that it's dewy. It's a beautiful set and skin finish. Like it just kind of looks like skin, which is my personal favorite finish. Shade wise, you can tell that it is probably one of my best matches that I own. I do think that it's a hair dark and maybe a hair yellow. I am more of like a neutral cool olive. So it can be really hard to get right like within the olive shades. There's like even more undertones. So let me go ahead and do this side of my face. I would say I'm using a medium amount of product. So far, I found that this is really buildable. You could totally sheer it out, or if you use the amount that I'm using, it just gives you a really great like medium, lighter end of medium coverage, I would say. And I find that one dip in the foundation is enough to cover my face. You want more of a full coverage, medium full coverage, you might have to go back in. I'm just adding a little bit more just to get some coverage go in. I think the finish of this foundation is beautiful. It's one of the most natural looking finishes I've ever seen in my skin. It might be because the shade is actually matching me as well and the green in that olive shade really helps to cancel out my redness and also just help match the rest of my body. I also can't emphasize enough how beautiful this is to blend out. Like it really, I don't want to call it sticky. It just has that perfect consistency especially over texture where it just lays it beautifully. Not quite as liquidy as like the MAC foundation. It's just like that perfect in between. It doesn't feel like it's sitting on the skin, but it's also not one of those like silicone based foundations that's really slippery feeling. Like it honestly just feels like a tinted moisturizer or something that like really just sinks into the skin. For the rest of the face, I actually already have this EXA corrector on. I wanted to try this again. It wasn't my absolute favorite because it does crease a little bit, but it's really nice and brightening. So I don't think I've ever tried it with my House Labs concealer, so we will be trying that out today. This is the shade Fair Golden in this concealer, by the way. I think when I run out of this one, I might get the lighter shade, especially with this foundation since it's a hair dark. I think it'll balance it out well. That has been working with my MAC foundation because the MAC one's a little bit light. This one helps to balance that out. I still feel like it works really well, but yeah, just something I might try doing. This concealer, by the way, is my absolute favorite concealer I've ever tried, if you've never heard me talk about it. So the combo of these two, it's been really nice lately. So I wanna do a little bit of contour using the e.l.f. Halo Glow Wand, just for some definition. So I actually recently saw a video of Halsey applying the new foundation and saying how she didn't wear foundation for the longest time just because it wasn't good for her skin and that's sort of why she made this foundation. I really like the idea of like skin focused foundations, especially if you have more sensitive skin like me. It just makes it a lot easier for us to find a good foundation in the beauty world now. I do like how brands are focusing more on that. I would love to know in the comments below, do you like that we're moving towards this more skin focused, skincare based formulas for base products, or maybe not. I think if we're wearing things on our face every single day, like they should be good for our skin, right? Just a really nice option to have. Halsey was also talking about how this foundation gives you that skin like finish, but it doesn't bunch up or sort of get cakey like other foundations will. So I will update you on that. But I did find that with a lot of like the recent foundations I've tried, aside from a few that I really liked, but the Glossier foundation comes to mind where that one like looked really nice. It was quite dewy, but it separated and bunched on my skin so much. So it's really hard to find that balance, especially for like more combo skin of you want it to look nice, but not like bunch up and just look horrible and textured. For powder, I'm gonna use the Laura Mercier Secret Brightening Powder. I've actually been really liking this one. I mean, I've always liked it, but I sort of go through phases with my under eye powders. This has like a little bit of glow to it. So usually when my skin's like a bit drier, I prefer this one. I just wanna smooth everything out. Although it hasn't really settled or really moved since we applied it. I'm gonna use this powder on the T-zone as well. And then I think I'll do a light layer all over the face. I always set my foundation, so I just, I used to try foundations not setting them, but it's just never the way I would use them, so. So I've also been really liking the Bare Minerals Original Mineral Veil. This is the pressed version, and this is like also truly translucent. You know how their Mineral Veil used to have this like, well, it still does the loose version? 
has this very strong like pinky undertone but I really like this pressed one because it does not show up even when it's set down I think you get that skin finish still coming through which I really appreciate for blush I'm going to go into this Seurat palette that I have not sure the shade I will have to link it but it's this really pretty like cool pink with quite a lot of shimmer in it it's almost like a blush highlight combo but it looks so glowy on the skin i have been playing around with my lighting and camera by the way i think it looks way better so if you've ever commented about that i hear you it can be really hard to figure it out because you know like what i see on my viewfinder and my camera can be very different from what it looks like on like your computer or your phone so if you ever do want to make a comment about the lighting if it like looks weird let me know if you're viewing it on mobile or on a computer it just helps me figure it out a little bit but i think i reined it in and it looks a lot better now for shadow i just want to start with this persona identity one palette i really like this super light pinky beige shade as my transition we might do like a winged liner today my brows are already done by the way as you could probably tell i've been trying a new technique for my brows and i think i really like it if you want to like updated brow routine let me know. I'm not that great at brows, so I don't do a ton of those, but I think I maybe figured something out here that's working well. I'm just gonna go into the same Surat palette that had that blush. I'm gonna take this very light purple shade, some of that same fluffy brush, just to add a little bit of purple to the look. And then going into the Natasha Denona Xenon palette, I used this shade, which is just a very light white and then i'm gonna take this one which is a shimmery white just on my lid i like this shade because it's a shimmer very very fine though so kind of has more of a natural look to it next i'm gonna take some liquid liner this is the kvd one i think i'm gonna use this and then smoke it out with either deep purple or a deep brown shadow so now i'm going to take this deep purple from the persona palette on a little angled brush this one's from a Trixie. oh that sucks. Um, we'll clean that up later from Trixie Cosmetics and we're gonna blend this out and pretend that didn't just happen. I have no idea how I'm gonna clean this up so let's just go on that journey together. I'm thinking just a clean eyeshadow brush first off. Maybe just literally taking off all the makeup right there. And then powder foundation to the rescue on a tiny little brush. Alright, I feel like that's good enough. I'm gonna use this refer eyeshadow. Nope. I Nope. Yes, eyelash curler, little eye prison. Ooh, I also really like taking like a light shimmery eyeliner, like this one from ColourPop. That's the shade Calabasas, right on the waterline. And then we will do the Maybelline Sky High Mascara in brown. I've been waiting for the maroon shade to be restocked. If you didn't hear, they launched a blue, a pink, and like a maroon burgundy shade of this formula. I hope that it's like the same formula and wears just as well because I've been wanting to try like a red pur reddish purple mascara. I've tried the L'Oreal one but the formula is horrible. The voluminous one. I don't know how so many people like that formula because it just flakes and smudges like no tomorrow. I forgot highlight so let's do it now. Forgetting highlight a lot of the time. I don't know why. So this is the ColourPop Sailor Moon collection and this one is the shade Moonlight, which looks like a really pretty light pink, but actually it's a cool like blue shift. Oh, I guess because we have a really shimmery blush on. Kind of already a highlight. For lip liner, let's do the... Actually, that's not sure. For lip liner, let's do the ColourPop Cool BFF. Surprise, surprise. If you're watching this and you're new to my channel or you just haven't seen the video yet, I uploaded a ultimate cool toned lip swatch guide, including all of my favorite lip liners, lipsticks, and tinted lip balms that are cool toned and never pull warm. A lot of you love that video and I'm really happy because if I can help you out find some good cool tones, it makes me happy. And for lipstick, I think I'm feeling this Flower Beauty Blush Rose. It's one of their more satiny, creamy formulas. So pretty, right? This is looking so good, I swear. If you feel like your makeup just never looks good or looks weird, find out your undertones and play around with colors. It'll change your life because once I started just using cool tones, makeup looks way better. I also recently learned that Halsey also has EDS like me, which is really interesting. I did not know that. But this is the foundation. It is now 122. I actually filmed before 3 p.m for me. I will wear this through the end of the night and give you updates. I'll also be inserting some clips of what it looks like up close, what it looks like in direct sunlight possibly, and what it looks like in natural light as well. So far I love the finish. I can't 
emphasize enough how like lightweight it feels it really doesn't feel like anything on my skin and it also barely looks like anything on my skin either it settles ever so slowly in my smile lines but that's pretty typical with the foundations it's definitely not like exaggerating that in any way texture looks nice and smooth the finish is just this beautiful satin finish so really excited to give you my final updates on this all the other products i use for the rest of my face will also be in the description below but i will see you in that next check-in bye Alrighty, it is 10.08, so I'm here for my final check-in with the About Face the Performer Foundation. So we're nearing that eight hour wear point. First off, I don't feel like there's any significant fading or smudging or caking up really, which is a really good sign. I was wearing a hat for a good portion of the day and I don't even feel like it necessarily came off my forehead that much. I was laying down. I guess you can kind of see the coverage maybe, no, yeah, maybe came off a little bit on that side of my face and my oil is breaking through. But I think my favorite thing about the wear of this foundation is that it claims that it doesn't bunch up and that is a completely true claim, which I absolutely am so excited that it actually claimed to do that and it performed that way because usually in this area of my chin, Almost every foundation, even foundations that I love, will eventually start to do a little bit of bunching just where I have a lot of acne scarring and texture and just oil breaking through and you know, you're moving your face around so that area of your face does get a lot of wear to it. But it just looks so good and same goes for around my nose. Even though it is oily, like it didn't make the foundation bunch up. It's almost one of those foundations that it does almost look even better throughout the day. Like right now, I'm definitely more oily than I would prefer, but I feel like if I set this, I could continue to wear it and it still feels really comfortable and I think still looks great. I think as long as you use just the thinnest amount of product that you need and make sure it's really blended out and I just, I have no like ill complaints, I guess, with the wear of this. I think it's so beautiful. I do think the shade in various lightings, it's like a hair dark and maybe just a little bit yellow. So maybe I will get the lighter shade of this and maybe mix it or even, I'm like actually really curious to see if I can mix it with my MAC foundation because this one is too light for me. So I would totally recommend this for you. If you watch my channel and you know you have a very similar foundation type interest as I do, where you like lightweight foundations that are really good for like combo sensitive skin but they also look just extremely skin like natural satin finishes they don't feel drying or anything like that i think you're gonna absolutely love this if you're looking for something that's like full glam i think this is like not what that's made for and it's just not that girl for full glam that's okay it's an ideal everyday foundation in my opinion i'm so glad this ended up working out because i was on a losing streak with trying new foundations just a lot of them claiming to do all these things and not living up to the hype but this one i also want to mention if you're someone who usually wears tinted moisturizer or maybe just concealer i think in terms of a foundation like this is almost a good foundation for people who don't like foundation as well because it's so lightweight feeling on the skin and it really does remind me of just a great tinted moisturizer. But thank you for tuning in for my About Face The Performer Foundation review. If you liked it, please don't forget to subscribe and give this video a like. There will also be another video here, so we can keep hanging out. YouTube thinks you're going to like this video of mine, so see if they're right or not. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you over there. Bye!